welcome you all on this NPTEL online certification course on mechatronics. Today we are going to discuss various examples of mechatronic systems. Uh, in last uh, lecture, uh, I have talked uh, a lot about the introduction part of it. I introduced uh, the course to uh, you and today uh, we are going to see various mechatronic system examples. So, uh, initial two examples I have taken from our uh, daily life equipments and the, the next two examples are from uh, a small uh, robotic kit uh, with the help of which I will be uh, trying to explain you uh, what are the various mechatronics component uh, uh, in it. So, the first one uh, uh, is a four stroke engine uh, where we will be seeing uh, how the mechatronics help us in uh, uh, making a proper um, uh, ignition timing and uh, uh, air fuel uh, uh, ratio mixture uh, to be sent uh, to the engine. Similarly, in the second example uh, in a copy machine uh, we will be seeing what are the various steps and uh, uh, in copying and how mechatronics uh, uh, helps us in uh, doing all those steps. And as I said uh, next two examples Lego NXT is a mobile robot kit basically supplied by Lego and similarly uh, toddler uh, simple uh, small uh, walking robot is again a kit uh, with the help of which we can uh, uh, simply understand the various mechatronics components. So, uh, coming to the first example that is the four stroke uh, engine, uh, let us look at what are the various four stroke sequences. Okay. So, these four stroke sequences are intake stroke, compression stroke, power stroke and exhaust stroke. So, uh, let us uh, have a look at it uh, here uh, in this figure we can see. Uh, the various four strokes are uh, mentioned intake stroke, compression stroke, power stroke and the exhaust stroke. So, uh, we can see uh, on this figure uh, the various component we have uh, piston and we have camp shaft okay. and here you can see that uh, there is a spark plug for ignition and there are two walls uh, one is the uh, intake valve and another is the exhaust valve. So, in intake stroke as you can see that this intake valve is open and um, we uh, get uh, the uh, mixture air fuel uh, mixture uh, into it uh, like this okay. and after that uh, uh, your piston keeps on moving downwards. Okay. So, uh, that completes uh, the uh, intake stroke when it reaches to the uh, bottom most position and then takes the compression stroke and in compression stroke what happens we have uh, the intake valve gets closed and naturally uh, your exhaust valve is already closed. So, you can see the closed position for the intake valve and uh, exhaust valve and then um, uh, with uh, the motion of the piston uh, air fuel mixture uh, gets compressed basically that is why this is called the compression stroke. Okay. So, we have uh, the mixture being getting compressed. Next is the power stroke. Now, in power stroke what happens there is a ignition which is given by the spark plug. So, spark plug uh, gives the ignition here this is the spark plug and again in this position both the walls are closed and after ignition um, the uh, air fuel ratio uh, uh, that is um, uh, there is the burning of the fuel here and those uh, gases uh, burnt gases they expand basically. Okay. So, hot gases 
expands and because of that we have a uh, motion of the piston and uh, uh, our uh, camshaft uh, then rotates. So, so, this is how we get the power stroke and in exhaust stroke uh, what we can see that uh, the exhaust valve gets open as you can see in this figure and your exhaust gas come out from over uh, here and in this case uh, our inlet valve is uh, uh, remains closed. So, these are the four uh, steps uh, uh, that is the intake stroke, compression stroke, power stroke and exhaust stroke. And with the help of mechatronics uh, what is done is that uh, we try to uh, control uh, spark timing we try to control air fuel mixture and we try to control the fuel injection ok. So, uh, we have a actually uh, microprocessor uh, um, uh, uh, as you can see in the this block diagram. There are various input parameters over here for example, we have engine speed, crankshaft position, spark timing uh, feedback, then engine temperature is there throttle position is there and mass of uh, mass air uh, flow is there ok. Now, uh, uh, output of the microprocessor uh, system is the spark timing, air fuel uh, mixture and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, this uh, controls your uh, uh, solenoid here uh, that is mixture control through solenoid and there is a fuel injection valve. So, uh, the power and speed of engine are controlled by varying the ignition timing and the air fuel mixture ok. So, what happens actually for spark timing what is done is that crankshaft uh, drives a distributor and distributor makes electrical contact for each spark plug and a timing wheel. Now, timing wheel generates pulses to indicate the crankshaft position and then the microprocessor adjusts the timing uh, which uh, the high voltage pulses are sent and the, uh, to the distributor. So, they occur at the right moment time. So, this is how uh, uh, spark uh, timing is controlled with the help of microprocessor. Similarly, for air fuel ratio control what is the, uh, done is that microprocessor varies the time for which a solenoid is activated to open the intake valve on the basis of input received uh, uh, about the engine temperature and the throttle position. So, with engine temperature and throttle position as the input microprocessor controls the opening of the uh, solenoid uh, valve ok. So, this is uh, how it is done. Then similarly, we have the fuel injection control here the amount of fuel to be injected into the air stream that is determined by an input uh, from a sensor of the mass flow rate uh, of air flow or it may be uh, computed with uh, uh, from uh, various other uh, measurement. So, this is how uh, mechatronics uh, help us uh, in the igni, uh, igni speed and the power control of the uh, uh, engine ok. So, uh, next example is another a very popular example of the copying machine ok. Uh, the copying machine uh, has got both analog as well as digital circuits. Uh, there are many sensors in it, there are actuators and there are microprocessors. So, uh, essentially we have all the components of a mechatronic system in a copy machine. Uh, uh, if we look at the working of the uh, copy machine, uh, the here are the various steps. First of all, what uh, one does is that is the user places an uh, original uh, which is to be copied in a loading bin and pushes button to start the process ok. Now, uh, what happens next is that the original is transported to a uh, platen glass and a high intensity light source scans the original and transfers the corresponding image uh, as a charge distributor uh, uh, to a uh, charge distribution to a drum. Now, uh, the blank piece of paper is retrieved from a loading cartridge 
and then the image is transferred um, into that blank paper with an electrostatic deposition of ink toner powder, uh, powder that is heated to bond to the paper. Okay. And then finally, a sorting mechanism delivers the copy to an appropriate bin. So, these are the steps um, in a copying machine. Now, here uh, if we look at it, uh, uh, how the control uh, takes place basically in this uh, mechatronic system. So, the analog circuit controls the lamp, the heater and other power circuits and the digital circuit controls the digital display, indicator lights, uh, buttons, switches from the user interface. Other digital circuit include uh, logic circuit and mi microprocessor that coordinate all the functions of the machine. Now, uh, what are the sensors in this? There are optical sensors and micro switches uh, to detect the presence or absence of paper, whether paper is present or not, okay. uh, it is proper positioning so that you get the uh, proper uh, copy of it and whether or not door and latches are in proper position. So, for these optical sensors are used and the encoders are used to uh, uh, track motor rotation. So, these are the sensors which are used in this mechatronic system. Coming to the actuators, there are servo motors and stepper motors which are used to load and transport the paper, turn the drum and index the drum. Okay. So, uh, um, uh, these are uh, the uh, that is the three operations for which the actuators are used and uh, we, we may have servos as well as the stepper motor for this purpose. Next example uh, which I want to uh, talk about is the Lego uh, NXT. So, it is a basically simple kit uh, which uh, uh, these days uh, many uh, uh, in many labs basically uh, these kits are used just to uh, demonstrate uh, 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 what various uh, mechatronics components here are. Okay. So, this robotic kit is from uh, Lego. So, here again we will be seeing the various actuators, sensors and the uh, uh, control controller. So, uh, coming to what are the Lego uh, sensors available in this? So, uh, there is a touch sensor, uh, there is a sound sensor, there is a light sensor, and the ultra, uh, ultrasonic sensor is there. Okay. So, the uh, touch sensor basically enables the robot to resp respond to obstacles in the environment, sound sensor enables the robot to respond to various sound levels. Similarly, the light sensor enables the robot to respond the variation in light level as well as color and ultrasonic sensor uh, enables the robot to measure distance to an object and to respond to the movement. Okay. So, these are the uh, various uh, sensors which uh, you can see the touch sensor, sound sensor, okay, uh, light sensor and you have the ultrasonic uh, uh, sensor. Coming to the actuators, so servo motors are there. So, here uh, with the kit, the three servo motors are provided, and uh, these servo motors uh, can be uh, connected to uh, the uh, controller over here. Okay. Uh, so, these servo motor ensures that the robot moves uh, smoothly and precisely. So, we have actuator, we have sensors, and we have the Lego controller which is uh, NXT brick. So, this part is basically the controller part or what we call it as the NXT brick. This is an intelligent con uh, computer control Lego brick. The NXT uh, what we can say is that the brain of the Lego Mindstorm educational kit. So, these days these kits are available at very reasonable cost and one can very uh, uh, easily program uh, these kits and one can generate the uh, various type of robots. For example, you can uh, make a uh, walking robot, uh, you can uh, uh, make some uh, legged robot, uh, you can make a mobile robot out of all these 
circuits and you can do the programming either directly through the brick or you can do the programming through the uh, software uh, which is provided uh, along with the kit through your computer. Next example is the toddler walking robot uh, which I want to talk to you. Uh, it is basically a two legged uh, robot okay. and uh, uh, again uh, there are various mechatronics components in it. There are sensors, there are actuators and uh, there, uh, there is a uh, microcontroller as you can see here okay. and there are sensors. So, uh, actuators here are uh, uh, servo motors which are being used and the sensors uh, which are attached with this kit are IR sensor for obstruction detection uh, that is infrared sensor. Then we have the bumper sensor for uh, obstruction detection uh, basically uh, these bumper sensors are nothing but ju just like switches basically. So, uh, uh, they make uh, on and off uh, contact ok. Then uh, we have uh, compass for orientation detection, we have accelerometer, uh, accelerometer for tilt detection and ultrasonic sensor for range detection ok. So, we have actuators, we have sensors and these actuator sensors are uh, connected through the microcontroller which is here the uh, basic stamp to module ok. So, this way uh, is uh, 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 this uh, 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 toddler walking robot forms a complete mechatronic system. Similarly, uh, we can uh, look at uh, stepper motor position and speed control ok. Now, uh, if uh, we look at uh, this figure uh, here uh, we see we have a say stepper motor uh, here there is a stepper motor driver and uh, this driver is connected through uh, a uh, PIC uh, PIC microcontroller and then uh, we have modes for input that is a potentiometer. Uh, then we have one analog to digital converter is there, there are mode switches and uh, there are position switches and you have the light emitting uh, diode uh, here just to see the working of it ok. So, the actuator here is the stepper motor, then sensors are here, uh, we have uh, switches are there, uh, then potentiometer is there ok and the microcontroller is the PIC microcontroller. Okay. So, the stepper motor position and speed control uh, this also we can uh, take it as an example of the mechatronic system where uh, we have sensor actuators as well as the microcontroller. Next uh, uh, another example I wanted to tell you uh, where uh, uh, the DC motor is being used as an actuator. Okay. So, here the DC motor position and speed controller uh, that is uh, through HB's driver and uh, pulse width modulation speed control that is PWM uh, control. So, here uh, we can say uh, there is a DC motor with uh, digital position encoder, these encoders are uh, the sensors, I uh, will be talking about much more about how the encoders work. Uh, um, uh, what are various type of encoder uh, uh, in the section when I will be talking about the sensors ok. So, uh, there is a HB uh, driver here and uh, 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 the encoder signals are sent to the quadrature decoder and counter and then uh, these signals are uh, sent to the uh, slave PIC, we have a uh, master PIC. So, these master and slave PIC are nothing but they are the microcontroller and then for input we have uh, keypad is there, uh, switches are there and whether our keypad um, uh, action is going uh, taking or not uh, that can be seen uh, uh, that can be uh, identified with the help of buzzer and we have a LCD uh, display. So, here we have the actuator uh, as uh, the DC motor then we have the sensors that is the encoder and switches and the microcontroller is the PIC ok. So, PIC type uh, uh, microcontroller is there. 
Now, uh, after seeing all these examples, uh, let us talk a little about what is the future of uh, mechatronics, uh, the course which we are uh, going through studying. Okay. So, the growth in mechatronic system uh, definitely uh, will be fueled by the growth in the constituent areas. Okay. So, the constituent areas are actuators, sensors and the microcontrollers. So, advancement uh, in traditional discipline fuel the growth of mechatronic system by uh, providing the enable, uh, enabling technologies. For example, uh, invention of the microprocessor had a profound effect on the redesign of mechanical system and design of the new mechatronic systems. We should expect continuous advancement in uh, uh, as I said cost effective microprocessor and microcontrollers. Then the sensors and actuator development enabled by advancement uh, in uh, applications of say MEMS, adaptive control methodologies, uh, methodologies and real time programming methods, networking and wireless uh, technologies and uh, mature CA technologies for advanced system modeling, virtual prototyping and testing. So, these days um, um, uh, 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 you see we have further advance uh, uh, with uh, what we call it as uh, the internet of things okay, uh, which has come basically with, uh, with the development of uh, networking and wireless technologies and uh, these are uh, uh, these our many of the mechatronic systems uh, have uh, become uh, controllable uh, with the help of this. The continued uh, rapid development in these areas will only accelerate the pace of smart product development and uh, as I said internet is a technology that when utilized in combination with wireless technology uh, that may also lead to the new mechatronic products. Okay. And uh, while uh, as I said earlier automobile sector has been one of the uh, uh, biggest sector which patronized the um, development of the mechatronic systems. So, the automotive uh, products uh, will uh, further fuel the growth of mechatronic development. There are numerous example of intelligent system in all walks of life as I said earlier including your smartphone appliances such as dishwasher, vacuum cleaner, microwaves and wireless uh, network enabled uh, devices. Further in the area of human friendly machines we can expect advances in robot assisted surgery. Uh, uh, currently we are using uh, say uh, the Da Vinci uh, uh, for the uh, surgery purpose uh, and uh, it has uh, uh, replaced uh, uh, one can say that the laparoscopic surgery and now surgery uh, can be done uh, very uh, easily and uh, uh, further human friendly machines can be made with implantable sensors and actuators. Other areas that will benefit from mechatronic advances may include robotics, uh, manufacturing, space technology, transportation and so uh, we can conclude that the future of mechatronics is wide open and uh, there is a definite need to study uh, this course and uh, try to understand how the more and more mechatronic products could be developed. Now, uh, before making any mechatronic product uh, as you know uh, if you may want to make a product you need lot of resources in terms of time and money has to be spent. Okay. So, uh, that resources we can use judiciously by going through the mechatronic system simulation. Okay. So, the mechatronic system design are complex by nature as we have seen and are becoming more complex uh, day by day and as the system design grows in overall size to accommodate ever increasing demand for functionality and performance this design must integrate your analog and digital hardware as well as software that controls them. Okay. And mechatronic system behavior is determined by interdependencies uh, between the different 
components as uh, these components uh, has to be uh, uh, controlled uh, or uh, the inputs has to be taken and output has to be given. Okay. So, therefore, an integrated and interdisciplinary engineering approach is necessary. Okay. So, for this reason engineers must be assisted by tools which allows a system analysis with respect to capabil uh, capabilities, capacities and behavior without really constructing the system. Okay. So, that without uh, actually making the system we should be able to see the behavior of the system okay. and uh, uh, hence comes the need for appropriate modeling and simulation tool for the mechatronic systems. So, here are uh, some of the references which uh, you can look for further study about this. I have talked about these references in my uh, uh, first lecture also that is uh, there is a very good book on mechatronics by uh, Bolton uh, and another by Alciator, uh, by Shetty, uh, Bishop as well as uh, you can look at our book also where you will find more of the simulation tools for the mechatronic system. So, uh, in uh, this lecture we have seen uh, the examples of the mechatronic uh, systems and so we have seen the um, uh, engine control, then we have seen the photocopier, copy machine, we have seen the Lego NXT example, we have seen the uh, 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 legged robot example and we have also seen the stepper motor control as well as the uh, DC motor control. There could be many more uh, numerous examples as I said uh, these example could be uh, say your uh, dishwasher in your house, it is the automatic uh, uh, washing machine uh, is there, okay. the vacuum cleaner in your house is there. Okay. So, uh, uh, as an exercise you can take uh, 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 just look at this system and identify how these uh, systems work and what are the various actuators uh, which are used here, what are the various sensors which are used here and uh, what are uh, what type of uh, controller either microprocessor or microcontroller is being used here. Okay. Uh, thank you and uh, next lecture uh, we will take up uh, again uh, some of the basics before uh, we actually move on uh, to uh, the actuators and sensors which are used in the mechatronic system. We will be looking at some of the basics. So, I will be talking about uh, some basic concept of electrical engineering, electronics engineering and then uh, we will move on to the um, uh, our next topic. Thank you.